Good morning. I'm going to give you some time to show up here. Uh, give me a moment. I figured I'd turn it on. Get some air circulating in here. <clears throat> So we're going to get started in just about a minute. So uh, yeah, make sure you have some tissues nearby, uh, as well as some water. Let me get some tissues for myself. I'll be right back. Okay. So, hello, whoever that might be. It's 1130, so we'll get started here. So find yourself a really comfy position to sit in. Let me just adjust this a bit. All right. So sit up straight and tall. You could be, you know, in a chair if you need to or on the floor. Either way is fine. And then once you're very much upright, relax your belly. Feel yourself rising up. So don't lift the head up, just reaching up, you know, from the core up to the crown. We'll start off in the usual manner, just to get the nervous system to relax. We'll take five breaths. We'll do them together here. So take a deep inhale. And ah, let it go. Once again, inhale. Ah, once again, now inhale. Let it out. Ah, Two more. Inhale. Ah. And one more time. Inhale. Ah. All right, now just take a moment to do absolutely nothing. As you're sitting here, just let your structure support you. So what I mean by that, you know, don't slouch, you know, but feel yourself very much upright but feel as if you're not you know, straining or anything here. You're just relaxing in your structure. And as you relax down, notice, are there any muscles, any parts of the body that are just still holding on? So check your jaw, check your forehead, your shoulders, your back, your hips. Just letting go every time you exhale, soften up a little more. All right, so I want to keep us active here, so just so we can stay very present with what we're doing. So we're going to get right into that three-part breath. So uh, Durga Pranayam, one hand to the belly, one hand to the very top of the chest. Begin here just by exhaling all the way out. Now we're going to do this a little differently today. So now we're going to inhale to the count of three. So inhale, one, and two, and three, all the way to the top. Hold the breath at the top for four seconds. One, two, three three, and four. Now exhale from the top down for five. One, two, three, four, and five. Squeeze the belly in. Inhale now. One, two, and three. All the way up to the shoulders. Hold the breath for four. One, two, three, and four. Exhale five. One, two, three, four, and five. I'll lead you through three more. Inhale three. One, two, and three. Hold for four. One, two, three, three and four, exhale, five, one, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, three, one, two, and three, hold for four, one, two, three, and four, exhale, five, one, two, three, four, and five. One more time together, inhale, three, one, two, and three, hold for four, one, two, three and four, exhale, five, one, two, three, four, and five. Now let it go for now. Let the breath return to its natural state. Now I'm going to time this out for about a minute. You're going to do that on your own now. You know, my hope is to make my job obsolete. So you get this stuff down, you're able to practice it on your own when you really need it. This breath is a really wonderful breath to help you calm down when you're going through anxieties. So remember, you're going to inhale to the count of three, Hold for four, exhale for five. So begin when you are ready to, and we'll keep this up uh, at your own pace here uh, for about one minute.
exhale right now. Once you've exhaled again, let go. Let the hands fall down. Let the breath return to its natural state. I'll give you a moment to finish up there. Take a drink of water if you need it here too. So as the breath goes, the body follows. As the breath goes, the mind and the emotions follow. Don't take my word for it. <laughs> Verify it for yourself. That's why, hopefully, I have some you can blow your nose on if you need to. I have some tissues nearby. And definitely have some water nearby. We're going to be doing that Kapalabhati breath. This is definitely a good time to keep up with this. You know, keeping the air moving in the lungs, not getting things stale. I'll go over it real briefly, just in case you are new to it. So just so you get the hang of it here, place your hands on your belly. See if you can pump your belly in and out. So it looks like this. So give that a try on your own there. Can you pump the belly in and out? I'll give you the side view here too. You know, so it kind of looks like this. All right, now once you figure figured out that you can isolate your abdominals and pump the belly in and out like that, well, then you add in the breath. So the breath would look and sound like this. Now make sure that you keep everything stable. Sometimes I'll notice in class, I'll see folks going, you know, keep the body stable. All that movement is right in the abdominals. So with that being said now, just so you know, I'm going to give us a little clap to go by. Every time you hear that clap, that's the exhale there, okay? So we're going to do 33 expulsions. I'll count them out. So take a deep inhale and begin on the clap. Inhale, and then very firmly exhale out. Two more times like that. Inhale, very firmly exhale. One more. Inhale to the top, very firmly exhale. And then from there, inhale, hold the breath in. Focus all the attention right at Anya Chakra, right between the eyebrows. We're going to hold the breath in for 30 seconds. Keeping the awareness very strong, like it's a, it's a magnet between the eyebrows there. Fifteen more seconds if you're able. And then let it go. Let the breath return to its natural state. Notice how this, how this breath affects you. How does it change things? Now we're going to do one more version of it. Uh, people have been a little, you know, probably more stagnant, hopefully not too stagnant here. So I want to get the body involved with Kapalabhati. So we're going to do something called Bastrika. Now please, we haven't warmed up shoulders yet, so we're going to be kind of mellow about Bastrika. Let me show you what Bastrika looks like. Bastrika is Kapalabhati with the arms. So this is Bastrika here. So we're going to be a little more mellow than that because, yeah, I don't know if you're warmed up. I've been, thankfully, <laughs> I've gotten to practice quite a bit today. So we're just going to do it put pulling things in. So basically, as you're pulling in, it's a, and then you soften, and just like that. So it's it's almost like, for lack of a better way of saying it, getting hit in the belly and getting winded by that with a, all right? So we're going to do, let's just say, 17 expulsions. So take a deep inhale, bring your arms out. And let's begin with three more. And now inhale the arms up, hold the breath in. And then on the exhale, now slowly lower the hands down, fingertips to the floor. Sit up straight and tall, roll the shoulders back. And now every exhale you take, imagine that you can breathe out any anxiety, any tension, any stress directly through your fingertips. So feel that little buzzing in the fingertips there every time you exhale. Letting go of that which is extraneous. Every time you inhale, breathing in new life. I'll give you about 
few moments of silence here, just to take a few breaths with that. All right, now eventually you could let go of the hands from the floor, shake them out a little bit. Pardon me a moment, I do have to blow my nose here. All right, so one more little breath work for you before we get into some movements. And actually, you know what? I'm going to switch the plan around. I was going to do alternate nostril breathing. Instead, let's just do the cat-cow stretches from seated with a focus on the breath. So real simple. This is what I call bird flapping its wings. As you inhale, open up the arms, let the heart come forward. As you exhale, bring the arms forward, heart goes in. And just keep on going up and back now. Inhale, open, exhale, close. We'll keep this going ah, approximately a half a minute or so. Inhale, open, exhale, close. And remember that as you're going up and back, make sure that your neck is a natural extension of the spine. We're never hype, we're never uh, crunching the neck back. And I'll give you the side view. So keep this going, of course, at your own pace. Inhale, arms back, exhale, arms forward. So inhale open, exhale, close. So make sure that the neck is more like that, never that. Avoid the whole crunching neck back thing. Yeah. Let's take about four more of these, opening and closing four more times. And please, you know, think of this time here. I like to practice in front of a mirror because it makes me see, you know, how am I holding my shoulders? So this is going to bring us to the next thing here. So if you are in front of a mirror, take a moment just to sit up straight and tall. You know, a lot of us, even me, I have, I have some issues in my spine from uh, car wrecks and uh, other things. Car wreck, I shouldn't say plural there. <laughs> anyway, I notice that even I have the tendency to let my head hang forward. So take a moment before you move to the next thing to roll the shoulders back. Sit up straight and tall. Make sure you're not leading with your chin. Let the chin be tucked in a bit. Yeah. All right. I just take a mental snapshot of that upright posture. So we want to keep that upright posture going now as we move to the other uh, spinal accentuations. So inhale and elongate, shoulders back and down. And then as you exhale, doesn't matter which side you start on, one hand on the floor, inhale and elongate. And then inhale, come back to center, exhale to the side, inhale and elongate. So it's basically a few... It's like a full breath in and out at each station. So you inhale and elongate. Exhale, start to lead to the side. Inhale and elongate. And then inhale back to center, elongate. Exhale to the side. I might be messing up the breath there a little bit. The main thing here is to elongate every time you are, I'm sorry, to inhale every time you're elongating. So here. And then here. All right, now, of course, keep this up at your own pace. Stay very mindful of the elongation and the inhale. And then as you're doing it, make sure that you're relaxing through it, only using what's necessary. I'll be quiet for a few moments here as you move at your own pace. All right, so about maybe, let's say, two more times from right side to left side. Give or take. All right, now once you've done approximately those last two sets from right to left, then we're just going to do a little bit of a twisting motion before we get into, uh, well, the next phase of class here. So inhale and elongate, roll your shoulders back and down. Exhale, twist to one side, look over the shoulder. Inhale back to center, exhale to the side. And pay extra close attention here to the abdominal muscles, which are moving you about. Don't think about the movement. Just feel where is it coming from. It differentiates yoga from calisthenics is the mindfulness aspect. 
Inhale, elongate, exhale, twist. You'll keep it up on your own for about a half a minute. So let's do about two more sets from the right to the left. All right. Now, once you've come back to center, stay right there. Now, I want to make sure this class is approachable for all levels. Uh, um, so <laughs> I'm going to give you an option here. If down dog is not going to work for you, just meet us at a forward fold, you know, standing, you know, in a position as such where you're hanging out over the legs. If there's issues like uncontrolled high blood pressure, then please put your hands upon your shins. Now, excuse me a moment. I have to adjust the camera here. Now, if there aren't issues like high blood pressure, well, then go ahead and come to downward dog. That basically is just like an equal lateral triangle shape in your body. I think most of you know that's like the most popular pose in yoga these days. So that's an option right there, is downward dog. Remember, if there's issues like high blood pressure, come up to a halfway lift, keep the head above the heart. Otherwise, if you are in down dog now, let's take five breaths here, keeping the elbows slightly bent, knees slightly bent, sway the hips perhaps a little from side to side. Good. Breathe deeply, breathe like you mean it. Apologies, I have to correct the camera here a bit. One day I shall get a good cameraman. My son is doing schoolwork right now, otherwise he'd be here. Anyhow, after the next breath, if you're still in down dog, walk your hands and feet towards one another. And just like I mentioned before, you know, a forward fold is fine if there's no issues like uncontrolled high blood pressure. You know, let the torso be like a waterfall cascading over the cliff of the hips. Otherwise, halfway lift is just as well. You can sway out the hips if you wish. If you're in a full forward bend, you can grab the elbows. Anyhow, we'll give this about five to six breaths, letting go. See, I put a shirt on by special request, and this is why I normally don't wear one because they get in the way. Anyhow, <laughs> let's take about one to two more breaths here. And then after the next breath or two, start to walk your hands up your legs, slowly bringing yourself to standing. Once you get to standing, you know, once more, stand up straight and tall. Roll your shoulders back and down. You know, take the Superman stance, so to speak, or the Wonder Woman stance. All right. So I want to play around with our balance. Balance is more about what's up here than what's, you know, below the neck here. It's all about focus. So feet are about hip width apart, knees slightly bent, shoulders rolled back and down. Now take a moment to do this little exercise. At least to do it in, you know, Tai Chi, I remember here. So palms facing down. And then you're going to take a deep inhale, and then as you exhale, you're just rooting with the... So take, a, take about three or four of those. Just inhale. It's like the breath we start with. Inhale, and... Just about three more at you on your own there. All right, now with that next one, really feel a root being established. Nothing can knock you over except the force of your own will. Keeping yourself very much upright, find yourself a good focal point up on the ceiling or wall in front of you. Once you have your eyes affixed to a steady point, shift your hips, root the weight, lift the leg. And just start to go from side to side like this. Shift the weight, root the weight, lift the leg. All right. So keep it up now at your own pace. In, uh, shift, root, and lift. Now, hopefully you're at the point now where this is easy. If this is easy for you, well, then we want to increase the challenge, of course, by throwing in the external rotations. You lift up a leg, and with control, you just move it out laterally. Now, besides uh, challenging your balance, this is a wonderful movement for that iliopsoas muscle. And if balance is an issue, please, I should have said this before, you know by now, hold on to something if you need to. All right. Now, if this is easy, I always want to add more challenge if it is. 
Then you can start to throw in the wave hands like clouds movement. It doesn't have to be perfect. Think of the way the hula dancers are dancing. You're just simply swaying the arms from side to side. The purpose of this is to mess up your balance enough so you learn to catch yourself. And as usual, as I would normally tell you in a, in a public class, if this is easy still, try it with your eyes closed. Can you balance when there's no external reference point? Do your best. I'm going to give this just a few more seconds. So let's say go from right foot to left foot two more times. Being very patient with yourself here. All right, now next time you've landed upon your left foot, I like to keep it simple. We're just going to play around with Vrikshasana. Uh, so you're going to root down through your right foot here, so the tree pose. Spread the right toes apart really wide, drop anchor. I'm going to start you off really easy, just with the kickstand. So left heel upon right ankle, hands over the dantian, just about below the belly button there. Now this could be where you stay. If you want to go further, you could slide the foot up to the calf, to the thigh even up in the half lotus. See what works for you here. Any of these positions are fine. Just make sure you're above the knee or below the knee, never right upon it. Anyhow you're doing it, your hands could either stay on the belly, go to the chest, or go up alongside the ears. So we'll hang out in the Vrikshasana pose for about 30 seconds. If it's real easy, try it with your eyes closed. Once more, can your balance be so solid and it needs nothing external to sustain it. All right, one more breath. <clears throat> and then as you exhale, come right out of it there. Shake it out a little bit. All right, then once you've shaken it out, we'll do the other side. So left foot, root down to the left foot, spread the toes wide apart. Lift up and then actually, I'm sorry, from here, place the right heel on left ankle. So we'll start off with the kickstand. Hands over Dantian. This could be where you stay, just like before. If you want to go further, the sole could go to the calf, the thigh, or half of this. Whatever works for you there. Hands could either stay over Dantian, go to the heart, or up by the ears. Once more, about 30 seconds. If it's easy, try it with your eyes closed. Do your best to learn to catch yourself. You know, think of your body like an airplane here. Uh, the turbulence is not going to bring down the plane. I mean, unless it's really extreme. <laughs> uh, the same way the turbulence doesn't bring down the, the plane, don't let the wobbles bring you out of the pose. See, like I just had there. <laughs> Two more breaths. And then after that second breath, fall right out of it. <clears throat> Once you've fallen out, shake it out. So I want to make sure we're getting things moving here. So... We're going to do, of course, all the little rolls in the body. You know, I try to keep it simple. I will give you a more advanced class probably tomorrow or the day after, but today it's just mellow stuff. So hands upon the hips, knees slightly bent. Let's just roll these hips around in a circle. Now remember, imagine you're doing these circles. Imagine that you had a jar of honey, a big giant jar of honey that you left in your car last night. You just brought it in the house 10 minutes ago. You jumped into that jar of honey, and now you're doing these circles inside of that. It's good for your skin. Now, uh, anyhow, <laughs> so let these be slow, mindful circles, in other words. What muscles move you into these circles? Don't think about it, feel it. And I will give this about three more circles in the direction you're going. And then after you've done those three circles, switch directions. Same thing, but the other way. <clears throat> I 
right, so once more, let's say about four more circles here. All right, and we're just going to work our way up the body. So after you've done about four circles, you're going to find your floating ribs. You can walk your feet back in. Remember, floating ribs, it's halfway down your torso. Once you found that point, it would correspond to, you know, like where the bra strap would run there. Anyhow, keep your hips still. And see, can you roll right from the abdominals here? All right. Yeah, so right from the middle. We'll give this just about 20 seconds in each direction. By the way, if you had a big breakfast, you're going to feel it from doing this because what muscles are moving you? You know, your stomach is right, you know, down between where your ribs open up. So that's where the muscles are engaging to roll you about. So. <laughs> All right, two more circles, give or take, and then after those two, switch direction. <clears throat> All right, let's take about three more circles, give or take. And then after you've done about three of those circles, give or take, of course, next we move to the shoulders. I gotta turn on the fan, it is warm up here. All right, so anyhow, shoulders next. One up and back, you know, then the other. Coordinate your breath with this, inhale up, exhale back and down. As usual, if you want more, you get the elbows involved. If you still want more, get the full arm involved. We're gonna keep this going for about 30 seconds here. Breathe in the arms about. About 15 more seconds, right arm, left arm, just like you're doing slow motion backstrokes. So one more set, finding the simple bliss of movement. And then after that last set, lower the arms down, then we'll take care of the neck briefly. So shoulders back and down, chin to the chest, inhale, ear to shoulder. Exhale, chin to chest, inhale, ear to shoulder, so on and so forth. Letting the breath move you. As the wind moves the kite, the breath moves the body. Hmm. Hmm. Let's give this just about five to six more sets. Right side to left side. And take nothing for granted. I mean, as you're doing this, just consider. I mean, how does this body work? You just think of a movement, and then all of a sudden the muscle starts to move. It's too easy to take that process for granted. I don't hear. Pay close attention to it. All right, so after, let's say, the next time or two that you've gone from right to left, then you'll bring the head back to center. Let me just check the time here because I do have to t make lunch in a bit. All right, so I'm only going to give you just one more standing pose. Everything else will be from the floor. Uh, just the standing pose we'll play around with is uh, just, we'll just do a, a crescent lunge, uh, real simple. So go ahead, step to the very back of your space. Uh, take a big step forward with your right foot. Now I'm going to give you a side view. So right knee is over the right ankle. Uh, from there, also the left foot, ideally you're on the left tiptoes. Make sure that the outsides of your feet line up with the outsides of the hips. So you have another view of it here, so my, you know, I'm not walking the tightrope. <laughs> Anyhow, once you got all that set up, you can place your hands on your hips. Let me get back into the camera here. <laughs> Lower yourself down and open up the hut. Now this could be where you stay. Uh, if you want to release the hands from the hips, they could be by the sides. They can be interlaced behind your back. Make sure you don't lock the elbows, of course, or even up by the ears. However you may be doing it, we're going to give this press and lunge about 20 seconds or so from here. Breathe into the open space. One more breath. 
and then relax your upper body. Take a big step forward with that left foot, shake it out here a little bit. We'll do the other side, of course. So now, left foot steps forward, right foot steps back. Left knee over left ankle. Once again, make sure that your feet are hip width apart. Shoulders rolled back and down. Hands could be on the hips or by the sides or interlaced behind you or even up by the ears. Whatever suits you best. Anyhow, about 20 to 30 seconds from here. Breathing into this wide open space. All right, and one more breath. And after that breath, release your arms. Hop the back foot forward, shake it out a little bit. We're going to come down to the floor. So I'm only going to give you about another 15 minutes or so here. So we're going to come to the floor to child's pose. Now, I want to give you an alternative. I know some of you can't come to the floor. It might trouble your knees. So let me just fix the camera. I'll fix the camera in a moment here. So what I wanted to show you is that if child's pose is not going to work for you, find a surface that you could lean on. And instead of doing child's pose, you kind of hang out like I am here, like at a right angle, 90 degrees. Just make sure your knees stay bent. You can just sway the hips from side to side. When we do the side bends from child's pose, you just walk the hands to the side, you know, and keep the torso facing the, yeah, keep the torso facing that side. Hopefully this translates well to video. I, I pray it does. Anyhow, if you don't need to do it from standing, let me lower the camera here. So I'll show you the other option. The other option is just a wide-legged extended child's pose. So the glutes go to the heels, drop your belly down between the thighs, and elongate from your tailbone all the way through your finger. All right. Now, if you have a child in the room with you, or even an adult in the room with you, if it feels all right, have them gently sit on your back. Oh, my word, if Sid was here, oh, he's doing his homework right now. I would have him do that. Anyhow, let's give this about a half a minute. Every time you exhale, just turn to butter. All right, turn to butter. I saw you there, Holly and Layla. You know what I'm saying, turn to butter. All right. <laughs> hmm. All right, so last year I was having a whole bunch of issues all around the sacral iliac joint area. So. I start throwing in this stretch because it gets right into that place nicely. So you're going to walk your hands now to the right. Keep your lower body as it is. Once you've walked your hands to the right, that's going to send the stretch down through the intercostals, through the deltoid there, uh, down through the oblique, into the hip. Oh, gosh, and this really feels wonderful on the side, on the left side there. Anyhow, we'll give this about 30 seconds. Breathe into that crescent moon shape. All right, one more breath, and then bring it up to center. And then we're going to go to the other side. So walk the hands now to the left. Once you walk the hands to the left, same thing. The lower body stays where it is. And now you get the stretch down the right side of the body through deltoid, intercostals, oblique, even glute medius and whatnot. Breathe into the side body. Give it 15 more seconds. Every time you exhale, let go of what is not necessary. Hmm. And after the next breath or two, take your time. You're going to come back to center. Now I want to get, that would take care of the upper body. Another way that I get that area around the SI joint is by the cross-legged stretch. So you're going to come up to all fours. Once you're on all fours, take your right foot. See, I gotta tuck this in so you can see what I'm talking about here. Take your right foot, cross it over the left, and then once that right foot's over the left, grip the floor with the toes, push back through the heel. That's gonna get the stretch all the way up into the hip. Make sure you don't lock the knee though. And then in order to help you get the stretch a little deeper, you can walk your hands a little bit to the left so you're looking out over your left shoulder towards the right toes. That should get the stretch right around that glute medius, give you a good squeeze. Uh, on the left side by the kidney and whatnot. 
We'll give that about 30 seconds. Breathe deeply. All right, one more breath right here. And then on the inhale, you could just shake that leg out, bring it back to center. Let's do the other side. So we're gonna take the left foot now, cross it over the right, grip the floor with those toes, peer out over the right shoulder toward your left toes. Remember, let the breath play a very active role in your practice. Stay with the breath. another 15 seconds every time you exhale letting go of what is no longer useful and then after the next breath come along back to center once you've come back to center let's just lean over onto one hip here we're going to do baddha konasana bound angle uh, so soles of the feet touch knees splay apart wrap your hands around the feet now as i always tell you here and i'm sorry if i sound like a broken record Remember, don't bounce the knees. You want to protect the hip joint there. If you bounce the knees, you're putting all that pressure of the fullest extension of the legs here right into the hip joint. Uh, it has the potential to cause problems. I'm not saying it definitely will, but it has the potential to. So if you really want movement, it's okay to rock from bun to bun. Just don't bounce the knees out. If you still want a little extra, you can start to bring your heart forward towards the thigh. Now, I like to practice in front of a mirror. Uh, not because I like, well... I won't make silly jokes here. You can pretty much see where that was going. Uh, the reason why, though, is I always like to make sure I'm leading with my heart, not my head. You know, if you look around the world, <laughs> you're going to see we live in a culture of turtles. People are just following their head around everywhere. <laughs> make sure you're not doing that here. Following your heart, not your head. Hmm. All right. I'll give this just about 20 seconds more. And once more, if I was there with you, gosh, this is a wonderful pose. If you do have a partner to help you out with, they can just kind of run their hands up your back. You know, just learn yoga from your cats, you know. <laughs> All right, now thinking of learning yoga from your cats, this is going to turn into a free flow, which is going to bring you to your back. Now, I'm going to give you about a minute for this free flow. Now, the reason why I say learning yoga from your cats, nobody ever had to teach your cat how to stretch. I mean, maybe they learned it by imitating other cats, but nobody ever had to teach a baby how to stretch. They just simply move about. So for the next minute, lose your mind, come to your senses, come back to your body, and give yourself any sort of stretch which feels good to you. There's no right or wrong thing to do. In fact, close your eyes, tune in. The wonderful thing about doing this at home is that nobody's watching, except for your kids maybe through the door. No. <laughs> so anyhow, take about a minute or so and eventually meet me on your back. When you get to your back, you're going to wind up in a position with your knees bent, feet flat on the ground. Take your time though. So one minute for a free flow. I'll meet you there in a moment. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to do a very easy twist to close off with here before I get, uh, bring into the relaxation. So when you do arrive on your back, I'll give you three options for this twist, depending upon how your lower back is feeling. So you start off with your knees bent, feet flat on the floor, arms out in T position. As you exhale, knees go to one side, head rolls the other way. As you inhale, back to center, exhale, you know, same thing. Just going from side to side, whichever way knees go, the head goes the opposite. Now that might be too easy. If you need a little extra here, well then you can practice going from side to side with one leg wrapped over the other, going from side to side like that. That will get a wonderful stretch on both sides, right in the hips. So that's one option there. You can do it like that also. And you know, I'm thinking I'm going to keep it simple. I don't want to give you too many options. You know, it's like going down the cookie aisle, you know, where you have Chips Ahoy and you know, I don't go down the cookie aisle anymore, actually, so I don't even know what the other cookies are called. Sorry, but <laughs> you get my drift there. Um, I don't want to give you too many options. That's why I don't go down the cookie aisle anymore. I don't know which ones to choose. <clears throat> All 
right? Now I'm going to give you a few more moments on your own just to do any kind of twists that feel good in your body. You're just kind of renewing the body, refreshing it, wrangling out any sort of tensions and whatnot. So take your time over the next few moments as you've given yourself a few good twists. You'll eventually find a comfy spot on your back or your side or your belly. And I'm going to uh, lead you through a relaxation here. So make sure you're nice and comfy over the next minute. Once more, yeah, let me give you some time. <clears throat> Now, don't be afraid to really get into this relaxation. I've spoken to, you know, I've been teaching now for, what, almost 19 years almost. And I've been speaking to students about it. And some students will say they're afraid to go into the relaxation because they don't want to get all tired. Well, yeah, the relaxation might make you so much in the parasympathetic nervous system that you feel like taking a nap. That's why after the relaxation, I'm going to lead you in an exercise which will wake you up and give you a little more energy. So, uh, so don't be afraid to let yourself go. Now I'll have this be a very a led, a guided uh, relaxation here. All right, so start to make your way down if you haven't already. And then once you've come down upon your back or your side or your belly, we're going to start off by calming the nervous system. Think about this when you need it. You know, you're going to take five deep breaths. You're going to let each breath go with a... Uh, so do that five times on your own here. Ah. 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 And please, I encourage you to remember that breath when you need it. You know, those times when you're freaking out about things you can't change. I do that just as much as the next person does. Remember that breath, though. That'll help you to calm down. Now that you've taken that breath, notice your head, your neck, your face, and soften it all up. Start with your jaw. Relax your mouth. Part your lips. Let the tongue just kind of relax at the bottom of the mouth there. You don't have to touch the roof of your mouth. And as you relax your mouth, your throat's going to relax, making the breath easier. You're feeling the breath now moving through the nostrils, down the throat, into the trachea. Your neck relaxes, your cheeks are relaxing, nose, eyes, temples, eyebrows, forehead, scalp, and crown. And then in your mind, send the message up. I am relaxing my neck, my head, my face, my neck, my head, my face are all completely relaxed. And now tuning into the area which goes from your shoulders down to your waist. And let it all go. Let your shoulders rest down. And feel that relaxation just moving down the arms through biceps, triceps, forearms, wrists, hands, and fingers. Letting it go. And as the arms relax, then your back relaxes. The rhomboids you know, right back there. Down through that erector spinae muscle, down to the middle of the back. Feel the area behind the kidney softening down. Chest and belly relaxing down. And then with that area letting go, send the message down in your mind that I am relaxing my arms, my shoulders, my back, my chest, my belly, my arms and shoulders and back and chest and belly are all completely relaxed. And lastly, tuning into the area which goes from your waist down to your toes. Feeling your glutes softening into the floor. And as you let go of your glutes, the sides of your hips start to soften down. Your pelvis relaxes. Thighs, calves, and feet relax. And then in your mind, send the message down, hear it echoing. I am relaxing my hips, my legs, my feet. My hips, my legs, my feet are all completely relaxed. 
So we have the physical body now completely letting go. Start to notice now the mind. So in your mind's eye, and as I said, this is like a guided relaxation, I guess you could say, I don't want to say meditation, so I don't want to disambiguate that term any further. So in your mind here, start to notice, you know, just the thoughts which come and go, and imagine that the mind is like a movie screen. And then every thought which you have in the mind, if, if you're one of those visual thinkers, see these images dance across the screen of your mind. If you tend to think in other ways, through audio or whatnot, you know, just hear the audio of these thoughts as they come across. Now, don't go looking for it. You know, don't go looking for things that aren't broken, so to speak. But when any thoughts that are there, just see them dancing across the screen of your mind. And as you start to fill the screen up with all the passing thoughts, notice how underneath that screen, underneath those thoughts, there is always that screen. In the same way, you know, that the images upon the movie screen don't affect the screen itself. These thoughts don't affect what is truly you underneath all these little passing things. So from here, I'm going to give you a little bit of silence just for the next few moments. Just see the images dancing across the screen of your mind. If you start to find any charged experiences, any charged thoughts or emotions, constantly get back to the screen itself, not to the dancing images upon it, but just to the screen. Now I'm going to be quiet here for about a minute as you just rest in this blissful, empty space of watching what is rather than reacting to what is. So now start to deepen up your breath. Start to breathe a little fuller here. As you start to breathe a little fuller, let that breath move through your body. Let it start to animate your body. Once again, lose your mind. Come to your senses. Come to your body. Give yourself the stretch which your breath gives you. Control nothing here for a bit. Just let the body move. And then eventually, in your own time, your own way, you're going to find your way up to seated. Once you're at seated, make sure you're in a secure spot, because we're going to do a little bit of a meditation, a real short, I guess I'll call it directing the attention. I don't want to call it meditation. Once again, I don't want to disambiguate the term. I've gone to many, uh, not to poo-poo anything, but I'm just going to say I've been to what I thought was supposed to be meditation classes before, and all we were doing was uh, imagery, uh, guided visualization, which is nothing wrong with, but there's, there's a difference. So... I want to maintain that. Um, but anyhow, <laughs> eventually go ahead and come on up to seated. We're going to do the directing the attention exercise, and then we're going to close with a little bit of a hara breath to give you a little energy for your day. So once you're upright, uh, we're going to do what's called the Anapana meditation. I, I take this from the Vipassana tradition. If you want to know more about that, just reach out to me. I will go into it now. But you're going to focus in on the area right at the tip of the nostrils, You know, right at the upper lip, the tip of the nostrils. Now for one minute, Keep your attention rooted to that area. The mind might dance away. That's okay if the mind dances away, but hold the leash right here. Draw it back in. So if you start to lose, you know, the thread, it's like a kite, you know? <laughs> Don't let go of the kite here. Don't let it wind up in, the, in your neighbor's yard. So one minute, 
keeping the attention rooted to the tip of the nostrils upon the passing breath. Don't control the breath, just control where the mind goes, keeping it rooted. From here, you can slowly start to open up the eyes. Ah, now the very last thing we're going to do, like I said, I want to leave you with some energy here. So we're going to be doing this little thing. It's going to feel more like martial arts than yoga here. We're just basically going to be going, ha, 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 just these little things right from the belly here. Now we're going to do about seven sets of these. So warn, you know, people in your house, hopefully nobody's sleeping. I mean, it's 1230, but. <laughs> Anyhow, bring your palms up here. We'll do these together. So we're going to start with the right hand. Take a deep inhale. And... Ho! 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 One more. Ho! 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 And let it go here. Shake out your hands. All right. Now from here, if you wish, you can bring your hands together to Namaskar position in front of the heart. Offer yourself namaste. And what does that mean? We say it so much in passing these days. I honor that divine spark within. I honor that which is almost unconceivable within me. That which is underneath all the things I think I am. You know, the mind puts all these coverings over, over, our, oh, over us. Uh, take a moment right here. To really honor that divine spark, that spark that goes beyond every little thing that you think you are and gets right down to the core. And then also feel how that divine spark is a part of all of us. I mean, gosh, in the world right now, I'm not going to go into the moral of the story thing here, but all I'm going to say is we are truly united under one situation right now all across the world. Feel how that divine spark is within everything around you. Whether you're, you know, you believe in something or not, you got to see that there is connection here. <laughs> you don't have to. It's up to you. <laughs> and I offer you namaste. May you all be happy. May you all be healthy. May you all be peaceful. Namaste to you all. So please, if there's any questions or comments, let me know. And I apologize, I've been trying to get Venmo, but for some reason Venmo is not working for me. So I do have a PayPal account. Uh, if you want to donate anything, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm not too worried. Um, so I will see you again soon. I'm going to keep on doing classes. Uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, have a wonderful day. Make the most of it as best as you can.